Building a smart home has a ton of benefits. Home security and monitoring, control of your smart home from anywhere in the world, setting scenes and lights based on what you're doing. But in my opinion, home automation is where the smart home really comes to life. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my three favorite home automations and how I have them set up. And you won't wanna miss the second automation where I show you how you can use a smart plug to do something in your Apple home that you can't do natively. What's up everyone, my name is Delin and this channel is all about my favorite tech and smart home tech that I use to make life easier and more efficient. If tech or building a smart home is something that you're into, consider hitting the subscribe button and stick around as we continue to grow the channel. In my opinion, home automations are what make having a smart home worth it. And today we're gonna to talk about one automation that is fun and futuristic and two automations that have real benefits and can make life more efficient and even keep you more productive. So first, the fun one. This is an automation that lowers my ceiling mounted TV when I turn the Apple TV on. When we bought our new home, we knew we wanted to do something with this kind of flex space upstairs. It's a bit of an awkward space and when my wife decided she wanted to grab a love seat to put up here, we knew we wanted it to be kind of a secondary media area. When she saw this ceiling TV mount on Instagram and told me about it, it was over. I ordered it immediately from Amazon and then grabbed a 43 inch HomeKit enabled LG TV from Best Buy to put up there. I'll link everything below in the description, but I've also found that there's a better option for an automated TV mount, so I'll link that one down there as well. After getting it mounted, I grabbed my Apple TV and set that up and then I was ready to enjoy. But I wasn't ready yet, so from there I immediately started to research how to automate this thing. My first hope was to grab an IR blaster that could be added into HomeKit, but after days of research, I found out that this particular model uses radio frequency from the remote control to trigger the mount to raise and lower. And to top it off, it operates at a frequency that is uncommon and can't be triggered by the Broadlink Home Hub I was looking at. So I went back to the drawing board, and here's what I ended up with. Using the Apple TV, the HomeKit enabled LG TV, and two SwitchBot bots integrated through HomeBridge, I created two automations. In automation one, when the LG turns on, its status in HomeKit triggers SwitchBot one, which appears as a plug in its aptly named TV down, to push the down button on the remote, in turn putting the TV down. After five seconds, SwitchBot one turns off. Then in automation two, when the LG turns off, its status in HomeKit triggers SwitchBot two, named TV up, to push the up button on the remote, in turn putting the TV up. After five seconds, SwitchBot two turns off. Now naturally, using non-HomeKit native devices like SwitchBot adds some complexity to the way the automation runs. So while it does have issues, it does typically work 90% of the time. So as a countermeasure for when it fails the first time, the SwitchBots are set up through HomeBridge in a way that when the bot turns on or off in HomeKit, the bot is triggered, in turn giving it two chances to work. One chance when it turns on, and a second after the five second wait period when it turns off. Both times should trigger the bot to press the button, so when it works, it actually presses twice. But that doesn't affect the operation of the mount itself. Now I'll be the first to say it here, this is not the prettiest automation I've ever seen. However, it gets the job done most of the time, and when it works, the Tony Stark level home automation brings enough joy that it's worth the trouble. So this second automation, in my opinion, should be easy to set up. However, due to Apple's security preferences, it's a bit more challenging to find a way to set up. With this automation, I have my house shut down, door lock, and my alarm system armed for a way when both my wife and I have left, but only if we don't have a babysitter. Apple has essentially decided that any device that allows entry or includes a security system can only be set via input from the user. This means that even if you want your door to lock or garage to close automatically when you leave, making it more secure, you have to manually trigger that. While I understand the reasoning here, I think it's more secure the other way around in case you forget. Now, the only way around this is to use a device that is in your home to control these devices. An easy way to set up an automation so that it just arms without you having to remember to do so is by using a smart plug. You can grab a spare smart plug and set that plug up as your security system trigger using an automation that says when this plug turns on, arm the security for away. When this plug turns off, disarm the security system. Then when everyone has left the home, create an automation that says when the last person has left, turn the plug on, and when the first person arrives home, turn the plug off. There's no need to manually set the system when you leave, and your wife doesn't have to worry about whether it's armed or not. It just happens, and it sends a notification when we leave to ensure we know it's armed. 
Another way to do this is to use virtual switches in Homebridge. A virtual switch is a virtual device inside of Homebridge that turns on or off, in turn controlling devices you have automated to work based on the status of the virtual switch. This is how I have the babysitter mode set up. I have a virtual device that is called babysitter mode. Then all of the automations attached to my wife and I leaving have a statement in them that says, if we leave and babysitter mode is off, execute the automation. If babysitter mode is on, it will stop the automation. You can also do this with a smart plug, just like you can with the arm home automation. I was able to create the babysitter mode and statement in the automation using a third party app called controller for HomeKit. This app opens up a lot more options for your automations, and I plan to do a video in the future on how I'm using third-party apps to create better automations in HomeKit. Now in this third automation, I have set up a calendar notification that reminds me about a video meeting that I have coming up in 15 minutes, and then reminds me again five minutes before the meeting, but will also set my video scene and stop the music that is playing. And then it'll set my Google Home Hub to a static screen so it's not scrolling photos during my meeting. Now I'm accomplishing all of this using none other than Home Assistant. Home Assistant is one of the deepest, most time consuming systems to set up, but once you do, it is by far the most powerful automation system I have found. So utilizing the Google Calendar integration, I have created a calendar called Home Assistant in my Google account. Then I've set up an automation in Home Assistant that looks for events on that specific calendar. When there's an event on that calendar, it'll use the Alexa Media integration to send a message through my Echo Dot here in my studio to verbally tell me that I have a meeting in 15 minutes. It will also flash my Philips Hue bulb over here in the corner in case I'm wearing headphones and can't hear it. Then, five minutes before the event on that calendar, it sends another reminder through Alexa and sets a scene I have set up in Home Assistant for video which sets my shelf lights to blue, Hue bulb to a nice dim background light, and turns my video light on, which is using a Maris smart plug. Now all I have to do is fire up my camera if I'm using it and log in for the meeting. This allows me to really focus on what I'm working on for about 15 to 20 more minutes or prepare for the meeting I have coming up and still have a streamlined, high production look instead of thinking about getting set up for it and being distracted by what I wish it looked like. Using automations to perform everyday tasks can really be fun, keep you safe and secure, or allow you to be more productive. It really is where your smart home comes to life. If you've enjoyed this video or found it valuable, please hit the like button and consider hitting the subscribe button. I have a ton more content on home automation coming soon that you won't want to miss. If you're curious about what other devices and automations I have in my home, check out this smart home tour. And if you want to see why the Apple TV is my absolute favorite home device, this video is for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.